All right, g'day guys, and welcome to a very special edition of the True Footy Podcast. I think it's 44 or 45, forget off the top of my head, but it's very special because I've got a very talented YouTuber joining us today all the way from South Australia. It's uh, the YouTube AFL community's Italian stallion, uh, Anthony, <laughs> aka The Pair. How are you today, Anthony? Ah, uh, Good, Jesse. Thanks for having me. Great intro. Very good. It wasn't pre-planned at all. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. But no, thanks for having me on. No worries, mate. Thank you for coming on. Um, now, I'm sure a lot of uh, people who are familiar with this podcast are aware of who you are and your channel and your Port Adelaide content, but why don't you just run people through um, who you are and how would you describe your channel and your content to someone who maybe hasn't heard of you before? Um, so, as you would have heard, I am the pair. I've... Um been doing Port Adelaide content on YouTube for a couple of years now. Uh, I'm, I'm basically a Port Adelaide tragic. Um, probably would marry it if I could. Um, and like the content and stuff, it's all about Port Adelaide reviews, previews, um, you know, play interviews when I get the chance. Uh, just, yeah, everything that's all Port Adelaide. And sometimes I try and throw in some AFL stuff in there to spice things up a bit. But, yeah, that's basically the gist of the content and the channel itself. That's cool, man. So, um, how long have you been doing it, and uh, what, when would you say like the journey started, and how you got into it, basically? Uh, the journey started, funnily enough, on February fourteenth, so Valentine's Day, and the one true love is Port Adelaide, so it was meant to be. Um, so that was February fourteenth, two thousand and seventeen. I just, I don't know what got into me, but I've always been someone to make uh, like little montages, little pump up videos. And I thought, well, let's just get this out and about, see how it goes, and started putting my face on camera. And that was that was a whole new experience. Um, and then, yeah, it, like just fell in love with the whole concept of doing YouTube and talking about Port Adelaide, most importantly. That's cool, man. Did you find um, in your experience like it happened quickly? Like did you get a bit of a, a sort of a following and the support came quickly or did you sort of grind without anyone watching it first like a lot of YouTubers do? Like how, how quickly did it come for you? Um, I was, it was kind of slow in the first six months um, as every YouTuber um, and it's still funny to me to say, oh yeah, I'm a YouTuber. Um, but I, yeah, the first six months I did this podcast called The Fortress Podcast which we talk about Port Adelaide and stuff like that. So to have that sort of um, background already, so people were watching regardless um, when I got to share on that page and all that. So it was it was sort of a quick build, but at the same time, everyone grinds. Um, and then, yeah, like I, I never really found it difficult because it was just me chatting Port Adelaide. So I, there was never a goal to um, come out and be like, I want this amount of subscribers, this amount of views, and this amount of time. It was always just put it out. This is what I have to say. My opinion is my opinion, and um, thankfully now, two and a bit years later, it's uh, people sort of like it. Yeah, oh, that's cool. I actually, I knew you did the Portraits podcast, but I didn't know that came first, so that is actually pretty handy that you had sort of like a little bit of a base where you could sort of market to those guys as well. Um, yeah, that's really good. Um, question, dumb question. Uh, what is the origin of the name The Pair? Now, is it is it is that in South Australia, like the power like casually referred to as the pair because i must admit i didn't know that until i saw your channel <laughs> um yeah so for years um i didn't learn this myself until i think like year 10 so I was 16 years old and went to the footy and it started to become a stereotype in the early 2010s um and when ken hinkley came around supporters started to pick it up and obviously with social media once something picks up it takes off mm -hmm. um so Cal and the Pair was a thing. So I thought, well, I need a name. I won't put Cal and the Pair. I'll just put The Pair, which just symbolizes, obviously, Port Adelaide, but also it's me, like The Pair. I'm the pair of Port Adelaide. <laughs> so um, that's where it sort of came from. I chucked in a few ideas. I did get ridiculed early on for being The Pair. Um, a lot of the older fashion supporters still don't get it, but... <laughs> In the modern age, it's become uh, this thing, and yeah, so a lot of people get around it. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Um, but just an interesting, interesting segue. How do you, how do your sort of like friends and sort of extended family and your network sort of perceive 
you being on YouTube because I personally don't know that many other YouTubers. In fact, I can't think of anyone I know personally. Um, but like, is it something that you that all your friends know about? Is it something you keep to yourself? And do, uh, do you get like support re- with regard to it? Uh, definitely. Um, my family has been 100% in everything. Like they watch every video. They support it full on. Everyone's a subscriber. The, but the biggest thing as well, your family is always going to support you through whatever you do. But when your friends get really like behind it, um, especially, um, for example, this year I started playing footy again for the first time in three years. Um, and every single one of that football club would be like, he's the pair. Like, I walk around, there's a pair. Like, we watch your stuff. They watch it. I, I've got Crow supporters that watch it religiously. Um, so to have that concept of, yeah, he's doing what he wants. Love it. Um, I'm very grateful for that. And I guess... You, as yourself would know, being on YouTube is, especially when you're not doing like big numbers like the Jake Pauls or the KSI and all those types of things. If you're doing something you're talking about and you love, um, to have that backing from people that you know um, sometimes wouldn't accept it, um, to have that support is just <laughs> next level. Oh, that's good to hear. That's good to hear, man. Because for me, I don't know. Like, uh, I must admit, I I'm almost self conscious about it. So I don't. I actually don't broadcast that I do YouTube as much. Because I feel like maybe it's just because um I'm a little bit older than the sort of YouTube generation. But like, I'm 26. But if I tell people I'm a YouTuber, I just don't feel like it sounds cool. Uh, so I get self conscious, and then like when people sort of wheedle it, like needle it out of me, they're like, oh, so you, you have a YouTube channel? I'm like, yeah, yeah, and like how many subscribers and I say that's money and they're like, oh, it's actually a real thing. <laughs> that's when they actually like, oh, we're right, um, which is pretty funny. So, And it's worse as well, like at least with true footy and all that, it's, it's all footy, it's all content that people can get around. doesn't matter which club you support. Well, me, support Adelaide. So living in South Australia, you've got half the city going, well, you do YouTube for Port Adelaide. You just suck yeah. in general just for the sake. <laughs> and then you've got the other side, oh, you know, we love you, you Port Adelaide. But then even Port fans are like, well, your opinion doesn't matter. And yeah. you get that from time to time. It doesn't matter who you support. Um, but it is, yeah, it's great to... Like, I, I'm i not the confident person um, in general. But when you put it out on YouTube, you're already halfway there. Uh, so when you're there, you just, you know, oh yeah, 2,000 subscribers, throw it out there. I'm the pair. Yeah. You just got to... Just brag a little bit because you got to own it. Day, yeah, you've got more subscribers than some people that you yeah. know. That's true. Not even on YouTube, so it's ballsy. I think, I think there's some stat like if you hit ten thousand subscribers, you're in like the top one percent or something. I could be butchering that stat, but you know that's pretty that's pretty damn good. So. But um, no, but it's it's especially like I've said this before, but it's especially impressive that you've got you know two point two thousand subscribers, and you, you just talk about one team mostly, man. So that's a massive credit. I don't know if I could do that with my Eagles content. <laughs> I don't, it's like I just premierships, mate. I I've seen tenth place four times in the last five years. Damn, it's hard to talk yet, about. and still people watch it. That's pretty. Uh, that's pretty damn good. <laughs> uh, do you um do you get recognised like on the street much in Adelaide? Um, it's funny. I actually do, and that's yes. that's that's funny because it's like, mate, I'm just this little YouTuber that talks about Port Adelaide. What do you want? But it's obviously, you know, you're 12, you're 13 year olds are like, oh my god, I watch you, <laughs> but just like here you are in the form. Um, yeah. but when you get like 30, 40 year olds come in, um, to even my work, and they'll be like, I think you do some Port Adelaide stuff. I love it. Um. <laughs> Yeah, that that's pretty cool. Um, but I never would say, "Oh, I'm famous." That's no, that's not yeah. a thing. But yeah, to get recognised is like, oh, well, they appreciate the content. So, um, yeah, it's good to get that good feedback. Yeah, it's good, man. That's good that it's, that it's positive as well. Like, yeah, some, occasionally, um, sometimes I'll get someone who comes up and says they're watching my videos. And I have to admit, the first time, the first reaction is always, why? <laughs> or I'm like, I'm like self-conscious. They're like, oh, that's embarrassing. I wish you hadn't. <laughs> Which is really, it's really backward. But um, yeah, no, it's just the way I kind of see it. But um, for, yeah, with YouTube, do you have, did you have any kind of like particular inspiration? Is there some kind of YouTubers that you, you watch a lot of and um, you take a lot from and that kind of makes you 
sort of it sort of drives you to grow your channel or anything like that or is it purely sort of from the love of the the team um well there's always that external drive from other people um that inspiration obviously we know Caden McDonald we know Austin Cookson but you also have uh, those people that do such different content like I watch, uh, I don't know if you've heard him, Marcus Dibble, who's also obviously Western Australian. I have mutual friends with him, funnily enough. Yeah, so, well, small world, man. <laughs> yeah, but, it is, actually. Um, you know, you watch all these comedians. You, know, you just grab things from different people. I, I'm not, funny enough, I wasn't the biggest YouTube watcher before getting into the content. So I'd watch, like, highlights of Port and mm. you know, F1 or any other sport and all that but I wouldn't sit there religiously and watch someone's content. But over the last couple of years, it's obviously um, you become more involved and just, yeah, so you, you grab certain inspirations from other. I've tried to do that with content, um, but at the end of the day, you just go with what you feel. And at the moment, that's what I'm doing. That's good, man. I'm coming up with so many questions in my head that I hadn't written down, but um, they're coming to me now. But um, I, th- yeah, I'm, I'm thinking like, uh, an interesting question for me is always like, do you think you love the game more or do you think you love the team? Like, where does your passion for Port Adelaide and, and the AFL come from? Because for me, I'll just say that I think my it's my love for West Coast Eagles more than I love AFL. So I don't know. How, how do you sit with regard to that? I definitely agree. I think, um, and that I, I can never understand someone being just a general supporter of the game. Yeah. Because <laughs> like, there's not that passion that we have as a supporter of a team. Uh, you go to every single game, you, go, you watch other games of teams that are in a similar similar position of your team to see that, hope that they lose, so you go yeah. up. Like, and that's where you develop the love of the game through love of a, uh, love of a team. So um, I can never, yeah, never understand why people, I just love the game. I don't support anyone. No, 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 no. You love this team. Um, <laughs> And that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's the best thing about sport is, um, and like, as you said before, like, um, your love of the game develops through other things as well, like playing footy, doing all that stuff. You you just love doing those things more and more. And then as you get older, as you said, you're 26, I'm 23, just start to appreciate the things a little bit more than say when you're 12, 13. Yeah, very true. I actually just did a video about that, um, all the like best moments I've had as an Eagles fan and contrasting, because I was there in 06 when the Eagles won, when I was 12, and I had that lower on my list of favorite memories and winning the prelim in 18, because I was 25, and you know I've been through all the hard times in between, um, but yeah, no, that meant a lot. But we'll talk a little bit about your love for Port Adelaide. Um, where exactly do you think that started? Is Because I know you're South Australian, obviously. Um, is it just been the family team and that's kind of where it started or is there anything more to it than that? Uh, it is a funny story because Dad and I are the only supporters, that, well, only Port supporters in the family. Right. Um, the rest are either Crows or they're not as diehard as I would say as Dad and I. Um, yeah. They're, yeah, they're Crows and when I was born, they tried to give me all Crows crap and all that um, content, but no. Nah. <laughs> uh, Port, and I just... Like you have vivid memories of going to games, um, but I think the love developed in obviously it's cliche, but O four winning yeah. the ship. Um, but as a seven year old, like winning a flag is what is it? You, you don't mm. know because you're just seeing these twenty two blokes celebrating, having a couple of froffies and with a medal around their head. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's when it started. And O five, I went to my first ever game at Amy. Um, we did lose. So, uh, but yeah, like screaming out Tread Rain a hundred <laughs> times in a night, it, it gets infectious and I think that's where it started. That's cool, man. Is that something you've kind of always shared with your dad? Is, is your dad sort of always been there in the, um, in the, well, in the foreground when, uh, when you're at these, with these Port Adelaide memories? Yeah. No, nah, dad and I, are the, we're the ones that will go to the game. Like, it, it actually sucks when I have to take someone else because it's, you know, you go with your dad. It's like second nature. We've got a game this week. We're going. Any other plans can get stuffed because we're going to the poor game. Um, we signed up as members late 2000. I think it was like 2007, 2008 because I was a junior. But then we went off a bit and then come back in 2012. 
and we've just been a member every year since then. Um, and then we just attend game after game. Lately, obviously, it's been loss after loss. But, um, yeah, it's just probably our thing. Like You always have something with your dad or some family member. Um, you always have one thing with them, and that, yeah, that's us, Port Adelaide. Yeah, nice one. It's a very similar story to my own. But um, but speaking of love and passion, um, there's a man called Travis Boat that plays for Port Adelaide. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I know he's a player. Uh, for, for me, it's Luke Shuey, and it's for you, it's Travis Boat, who you've got a bit of man love for. Um, why is that, Anthony? <laughs> Where does that come from? I, um, I've always been one for leadership. Like, I've always loved someone that will stand up and take their team or a friend or someone to the next level. Uh, and Boke, in, I think when it, he needed to sign, or he had the opportunity to go, and he signed halfway through 2012. And to me, I was like, oh, that's loyalty, that's leadership. And they became captain. And then I think it was one game against the Pros where he kicked a goal from outside 50, and he just pumped the air. Like, he celebrated, like, no tomorrow. And I was like, oh, Boke, I like you. You're, you're a good man. And then, yeah, ever since then, the number one on the back of the Guernsey, to me, till this day, he's still captain of Port Adelaide Football Club. I think he's been the best captain we've had. Um, and, you know, to get to know him a little bit more as a person as well, like going to the open trainings and chatting to him a bit, he's just such a nice bloke. And everything that he does off the field with charity and stuff like that, it's just infectious. And, yeah, I've always said, oh, he's man love my man crush um yeah. he's my he's my background on my phone i've had pictures with him constantly i i turned gay for travis Boat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah i'm not I, i'm not surprised after all that um <laughs> no i totally feel you i'm, I'm like that with shoe uh, the shoe man but um but yeah you just mentioned it then i meant to ask as well you do actually a lot of your content is talking to these players at training sessions which is awesome do you have any trouble getting access to them did you have to like organized for that or is it just you consistently you're there and they're always happy to help um no nah, i never really have to organize anything obviously they're time permitted because it's an open training and there's mm. obviously 20 30 other fans to get to so i just say to them like can I have a quick chat um even like the media managers there but the open training is for the fans so you can do whatever you want with the players um obviously time permitted um but yeah i never really have any trouble getting access so obviously, if they're in a rush for a meeting or something, then that's unfortunate. But usually, like in general, we'll get six of the 22 that will be playing on the weekend having a chat. Um, some like it more than others. Um, yeah. But, yeah, they obviously, Bokey's one that uh, never says no. He loves it. Um, and it's even funny, too. Like you get a couple of players that actually recognise you. They, they know your name. They know of you. Um, so that's that's even better. So they're more than happy to do it. Yeah, that's pretty cool, man. To think that um, you have these Port Adelaide players who know you, Th- that must be a pretty cool feeling. Yeah, well, I wouldn't say like no, no, but to at least face recognition and be like, because <laughs> funny yeah. story, I, I went to um, I don't know if you heard of the festival Hot Dub Wine Machine. Um, yeah, yeah, that was here. Obviously, just recently passed, but in 2018 it happened, and I was there, and like Ollie Wines. Darcy Van Jones, Tom Fleury, and somebody else that I'm forgetting that was in a photo. So we took a photo, and I said to Ollie, mate, um, you know, come to the training. He's like, I knew your face was familiar. I knew you were the guy that always comes with the camera and all the questions. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty funny to share a couple of drinks with them at um, Hot Dub and <laughs> share that. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah, no, I'm jealous. I definitely wish I had that at the Eagles uh, training sessions, but no. <laughs> I know. It, it's, uh, Port Adelaide itself are very fortunate. Um, all the fans are very fortunate. that We have an open training every home game and um, mm. you can rock up and just chat to the boys, do whatever you like. So that is, um, I'm forever grateful for that. That's awesome, man. Cool. Um, so I'll just ask you a couple more questions about uh, the YouTube thing and then we'll move into some uh, real footy talk, specifically Port Adelaide. But um I was just going to ask, uh, what is, you know, you said you, when you started YouTube, it was very casual the way you uploaded and, um, and it was just because uh, you enjoyed it and you enjoyed talking about Port Adelaide. But has that goal shifted now that you've become a, what I would describe as a very successful channel? Um, do you have a different goal or is it still kind of the same mindset for you? Um, I think well, what's worked best for me is the fact that um, 
I've had the same mindset for all the two years. I keep on reminding myself of it that, you know, opportunity um, will always come to do different content and different things. Like, fortunate enough, like, you reached out, we're doing this podcast. Um, you know, I flew to Melbourne earlier in the year. I got to um, be with Caden McDonald at the Port Adelaide Melbourne game. Um, just, yeah, all these things have come because I haven't forced myself to do it. It's been more so, you know, um, put this out, put that out. Obviously, you have a schedule. You want to do things on repeat, uh, like a review or a preview of the games. But I have never had a goal set to be at a specific number of subscribers. Um, And I think that's probably what's worked best for me because I'm surprised every single time how a video does. Obviously, you get disappointed with how a video goes. Like, oh, Mm. I only got 300 views on this, but somehow this got 900. Like, it yeah. didn't do anything differently. So you're always going to be disappointed with that concept, but yeah, I never had a goal to be like, oh, yeah, in two years' time, 10,000. Three years' time, 20,000. Five years' time, I want to be the number one. Like, that's just, it's never been me, and I don't think I'll ever have that concept, but I think um, yeah, I'll have this drive to change it up every year. and. You know, sitting at two, 2,200 at the moment, um, yeah, we'll be grateful to get 3,000 at the end of next year. Oh, that's cool, man. It's um, it, it's impressive how that you've had the discipline to make these weekly uploads all the time when you've actually also got a really casual mindset. I'm, I'm a little different. I'm sort of the opposite of you. I've kind of like ultra driven to reach targets and that's just what, what motivates me. And I totally know what you mean about... Um, sometimes it's the effort the most effort you put into a video is the ones that don't don't do well just sometimes because maybe the title is not right or something like that um classic example that it was like honestly yeah yeah the classic example is the actual the podcast for us because uh that as you can imagine takes so much editing and um uh, because it's an hour long often um yeah it doesn't quite get the views but oh that's all right just youtuber things i don't know and like with a podcast as well like i've obviously done a radio course um do a radio show and with a podcast it's like people don't they just pick it up whenever um so in the first 24 hours of you putting it out you might like oh well hang on why aren't you Mm. watching but then like in a week's time you'll see the numbers and think, oh okay they've listened so and because i think one thing as well and you probably will agree with this is the fact that afl moves so quickly from week to week in season once you put something out within 24 hours it's old news and that's for every media um concept and um content itself people indulge in it they'll watch it and then they'll move on to the next thing um and that's something i've tried to put with my stuff is um you know try and always keep it fresh and watching your podcast every single time it's like it's always different and it's always talking about different things so um that's it's not to be angry about but it's yeah, it's, it gets frustrating. I know what you mean, man. I do the weekly tips video as well. And um, sometimes I work full time and I know you work as well. Um, like sometimes I can't get that up until a Friday morning. And it's just like, oh, I've got like two days for this to get views. And then the video is just no, it's worth nothing. It's uh, That is the frustration of it. But the, that, the up flip side of that is that we, as AFL YouTubers, always have the content coming to us in the sense that there's always new events coming in footy. You know, if you if we were just full time vloggers or whatever, uh, we'd have to manufacture the stuff like fresh all the time. So it's it's a love hate thing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and especially when your team sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Fair play. <laughs> um, just before we move on to that, man. Sorry, this section of my questions are taking so long, but I'm actually like really interested in the answers. But um, I remember seeing that there was like some opportunity for a Port Adelaide influencer to to travel with the team or something like that. I've tried to do my research for this um, interview, but that one's like lost somewhere on Twitter, so I couldn't find it. But um, if you jog my memory, there was some opportunity that you missed out on. And I remember all of us were like, "How the hell did you miss out on that?" <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, I'm pretty sure it was the roaming interviewer to do what I like style so um people submitted videos to uh, roam about and um do it every week at, at a port game and obviously to go to china to start it and um they have done the guy they got was is actually pretty good um 
running Damo, I think it is. Um, so they got the right man, and obviously you're going to have to have personality, and he works in radio and stuff like that, so he has skill base, um, everything behind it. But yeah, I, I did miss out, and I had did, did have a lot of people messaging me saying, what are like stupid? They got the wrong guy. <laughs> and I, I didn't, I didn't go in it with any expectation. Like I put the video in. People were like, "Oh, we love it." Um, did get a few views actually. I won't lie, but uh, no, nah, look, they Port Adelaide, um, they did choose the right guy. But yeah, would it would have been nice to get it. We just have to do it in other ways now. That's it, man. And I'm sure, like, uh, you've got a bloody good resume for this sort of stuff. So I'm sure somewhere down the track you'll get the opportunity again. So I wouldn't worry too much. Um, (laughs) (laughs) cool man so with Port Adelaide uh, we can talk a little bit about them specifically Um, the latest news on them is that they have now reverted to a sole captain in Tom Jonas um, after they went with the dual captain with um, Ollie Wines previously what are your thoughts on that is that the right move for Port Adelaide yeah it should have been done at the end of 2018 if, if I'm perfectly honest. Um, I know a lot of the fans, <laughs> they got really angry. Um, and I think I wasn't angry. I was just more frustrated with the fact that, um, you know, obviously, obviously it was a sad time because both gave up the captaincy. But um, I think what they did was they, they, they didn't have a backup and they knew this day was coming. And I think them going down the co-captaincy thing, especially when you're 149 years, you know 150 years people are going to like, well, the, in the top five things we want for the club to do is have a guy wearing number one, especially mm. with the prison bars. We're going to have the prison bars next year in the showdown. We want to see number one on the back of the prison bar, Guernsey. Um, and I think they, they, they didn't have a backup. They pressured themselves into having leaders and, Wines and Jonas were the obviously clear front runners, but I think now they've reverted back. Um, he will be a lot happier. Jonas is the right call. Um, he was my choice at the end of 2018. Anyway, I think you know we saw uh, Kane Corns come out and say he's not the right man for the job. Um, and yeah, sometimes you can I can see his point. Um, not everyone's going to be the big, classy, flashy like a Fife or uh, like a Selwood, but you know, there's been players in the past, Darren Glass, perfect choice, West Coast. Um, mm. And Jonas is that hard-hitting captain. He's going to be putting his body on the line. He might not do the voice work, but he's going to be doing the body work and he's going to be taking his team from the back line, um, showing it how it's done. So I think um, he's the perfect choice. I would have actually gone Hamish Hartler as well, but um, mm. yeah, nah, Tom Jonas, he's the man. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, I think you're right about um, the whole, um, in terms of the choice. Like Darren Glass is a really good comparison. I think when he started at the Eagles as captain, everyone was like, really, why him? And then the same thing happened with Shannon Hurd, and they both turned out to be really good captains in the back line. Um, but it's interesting, the clarification, because like, I wasn't sure why people kind of ridiculed the dual captain thing for Port LA, but it's interesting to know that it's like a real tradition thing, having the number one Guernsey back so um but yeah it seems like everyone's quite relieved at that all the port fans <laughs> yeah hey um obviously you're gonna get those smart aleck comments of oh you should have done that a year ago or it's mm. about bloody time but majority i think will be happy to see number one on the back of the uh the guernsey for next year and i am certainly am i'm gonna be buying and buying a number one on the back of mine yeah, nice one. That's cool. Um, cool, mate. So, in other Port Adelaide news, obviously the draft happened a couple of weeks ago. Now, I know you've done reaction videos and stuff like that about it, but um, for the True Footy podcast, uh, what were your thoughts on Port Adelaide's draft haul? Um, you picking up Miles Bergman, Mitch Georgiades, Dylan Williams, and Jackson Mead all in the top 25, very forward heavy. How did you feel generally about that haul? Um... I was a little surprised to go, as I said, forward heavy. Um, I was hoping we'd pick up a key defender, especially with Dougal Howard going out in the trade period. Um, And they're not like massive key forwards either, which, again, is a little surprising. They're a little little more versatile, and I know the way the game's projecting to be height isn't going to be as much as uh, um, importance as versatility will be. Um, they do have some pace, which is good. Um, they do have some skill, which is very good, especially with a side like ours that can't kick half the time anyway. But 
I'm overall happy, especially with the Jackson Mead pick. I know he was a father's son. He's almost guaranteed coming, but it's just nice to have a bit of, um, you know, I think he's our first father's son pick. So uh, mm. that's like even more special to have that. So I do feel they're a good crop of players, and especially with Georgie Artis. I did not expect that coming. Uh, yeah. I did pick Bergman. I was like, well, pick 14. We're not going to get any of the ones that uh, the fans want. So Bergman was a good choice. George, George Alice was obviously his prize. Uh, Williams was another one I didn't quite pick, but I can see what they're trying to do the um, the draft group, uh, the draft group. So I haven't been too bad in recent form, but yeah, we'll see how they go next year. Yeah, for sure, man. They've picked up uh, seven top twenty-five picks in two years, which is like a really aggressive drafting policy. Obviously, you lost a couple of good players in Pollock and Wingard, but um, it seems like you've nailed the draft. Georgiata, Georgiatas is a funny one because even as in WA, like I, I get into the draft and stuff, but I didn't really hear that much about him. I thought, oh yeah, maybe uh, I read that he might bolt to Geelong in the twenties or whatever. And then as soon as you get drafted, I've seen all these reports. Oh yeah, no, nah, he's been a gun all along. He's just been injured. <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, yeah, right. right. No <laughs> yeah, but uh, it sounds like he's a pretty um, high potential talent. But yeah, it is interesting. I thought to go for three forwards, especially after you got Rosie last year. Uh, but I think I read somewhere Port Adelaide were deliberately going for forwards. And I think you guys had the chance to get Dev Robertson with the first pick of day two, and then obviously trade it down. And I presume that's because you were taking Mead. And probably, you know, um, after taking like Butters last year and you got Willem Drew, um, a few inside mids there, maybe you didn't really have a need for Robertson. Were you, were you at all like miffed to miss out on him? No, I always thought um, Robertson wasn't a type that we were going to get. I I was not surprised that we traded the first pick of the second uh, round with 22. I think it was a little bit more reassurance to get Mead. Um, obviously, Brisbane wanted Robertson. Um, to try that, we'd pick up, uh, as we did, Williams, and that sort of pushed back anyone else trying to get Mead or anything like that. So it, it was, yeah, it was smart play by Port, and I think they played it really well um, to get Mead. And Robertson um, probably belonged in Brisbane anyway. And I really felt that, um, I th- well, with pick 23, I did think we'd get Will Gould, who's a South Australian. I thought maybe we'd pick him up as a defender. Um, but, yeah, Williams. Um, it was a good, solid pick, and then to get Mead was just, yeah, it's just a bonus to have four picks inside the top 25. Yeah, it's not bad at all. Um, Michael Stanton from the Discord, I should have said as well, we've got a few boys from the True Footy Discord who were very excited to have you as a guest on the True Footy Podcast, and they've come in with some questions. <laughs> uh, Michael Stanton's got the first one, and it says, um, it's draft-related, so I've, I've plucked it here. Uh, do, were there any big surprises for you from the draft? Just in general? Yeah, in general, I guess we kind of spoke about Georgiades, but was there anyone else um, that you were real surprised about? Um, not particularly. I, I obviously with the build up, I was more surprised at who was going to be picked. Um, Pickett obviously going to the D's. It was a bolter. Um, I actually was kind of hoping Paul would get him, but that didn't. Yeah. That was it. Uh, didn't pan out. Um, Stevens going to Sydney was a bit of a surprise. Um. I didn't expect him to go that high as well, top five pick. I thought he'd go to someone like a Carlton or something further down. Um, again, it wasn't massive surprises for me, and I know it wasn't the deepest of drafts, as the experts were saying. So um, I think it was just more the fact of how much people actually traded their picks um, for next year's draft, which is apparently one of the most compromised drafts in history. Mm. So that was more surprising to me than actually who – uh, which clubs picked up? Um, but yeah, I, yeah, the father son academy stuff is really, really frustrating for a draft. But yeah, no, nah, no surprises. Um, to answer the question. Yeah, well, so the father son ones probably benefited you guys this year. You got two. Uh, obviously, Mead was a, is a lot rated higher than Burgoyne, but um, but still, I think father son's really good. But I think looking at next year with all those academy picks. Um, it's going to be a bit of a fast by the sounds of it, but we'll see yeah, how it goes. Yeah. Um, cool. So we alluded to it before about having seven picks under 25 in the last two years, um, which is a stark contrast to 
uh, was it end of 2017 or the start of 2017? No, the end of 2017, you guys recruited all these like mature ages. Um, Rockliffe, who has been fairly successful, you'd say, but then you had a host of guys like Trengrove, Watts, uh, Motlop, Thomas, um, and Mackenzie off the top of my head as well. Um, how do you feel? Oh, this is actually a question from HK Pig to tie into that. Uh, he wants to know, uh, how do you rate Port's um, aggressive strategy to rebuild and also their list overall? How, how well do you think Port are placed? Um, 2023 will be a, probably, the, probably the year to judge how we've done over the last five years, um, especially with the kids all coming in. I think if we're top four or winning a premiership in 2023, massive tick. But to judge right now, I'm, I don't know. It's it's tough because especially with the trading of the mature age picks of Rockliffe, Motlop, uh, Watts, Trangove and all those blokes, uh, you'd say that's a massive fail. And I know Watts had his injury earlier this year and I actually thought, and I know it was only one game that he played, you actually got the feeling of if he's playing at half back in that kind of form for the whole year, I think he's going to be all Australian. And I did feel for him when he did get injured. Um, but Rockliffe, yeah, was okay in 2018. Obviously, a few injuries. 2019 um, was a better year. But, um, yeah, Motlop was a fail and all those others. But, yeah, 2023 is probably the year to judge best. But right now, I think we're well-placed to progress forward probably with a new coach next year. Oh, interesting. Um, There's your scoop, Jesse. <laughs> well, there, <laughs> there you go. Well, um, that actually kind of leads, uh, leads into a question from Bruce, uh, another Discord user. <laughs> Discord user. Um, he re- he wants to know what are your thoughts and on Ken Hinckley and um, what are, what's generally the vibe with the Port fans, would you say it's a 50-50 split on wanting Hinkley out or is it more like 80-20? Give us some insight into that. Oh, well, well you'll be here for hours, mate. Um, <laughs> nah, what I, I've always liked Ken. I think he's a leader. Um, he's always, I've always liked his um, demeanour. He's always pretty positive. I think what's frustrating is the message that he tries to bring across that you know, we're, we're always we're just trying. You know that coach that's like, at least we're trying. Mm. Um, as as a Port fan, I know the Port faithful, they're always like, no, no, no. We're here to exist to win premiership. We're here to do this. We're here to do that. They're traditionalists. They want everything, um, you know, how it's been in the old days. And to a certain extent, that um, does work. But obviously, you're in the modern era. But I think in terms of the feel around the coach, I think majority, I'd say, 70, 30, I'd say, want him gone. Um, and I think the club's been a bit lenient on Ken in that aspect. But at the same time, you know, we're not the ones coaching. We're not the ones being coached by Ken. Um, so the players love him. The players want him. And at the end of the day, you can't argue that point. We're going to have him for 2020, and we're going to have to deal with whatever comes uh, for the 22 games of next year. But um, as I said, I don't think he'll be coaching the year after unless we... At least win a final. We've got yeah. to win a final. Finish in the top six, play a home final, win at home. Then I'll be happily saying, well, you know, 2020, 150th year, we won a final and we've probably got the best young talent to come through over the last couple of years. We are very well placed. Obviously, Ken will be coach in 2021 if that's the case, but at least I know now we're like, well, we won a final and we've got the best young talent. So but yeah, it's going to take a lot to. Convince everyone else. That's it. Yeah, true. I mean, I thought the the treatment of Hinkley or the behaviour around Hinkley from guys like David Kosh was pretty interesting because I remember I think it was at the end of last year, um, Kosh came out unequivocally and said, "Yeah, pass mark is finals. He's got to make finals." And then uh, didn't make finals, and Hinkley's still in a job. And I did wonder if maybe the salary cap like implications there. Obviously, um, there's a cap on football department spending, so if they they pay out Ken Hinkley then they, uh, they might uh, breach their football department salary cap. I don't know if it's something like that. People thought the same thing with Ross Lyon. Um, so a pass mark for you is a winning a final in 2020. That's very interesting. Yeah, I it was actually a pass mark last year. Yeah, um, well, there you go. 2019 to, you know, for Ken to stay on, win a final, and I'd be pleased. 
Obviously, 2019, that didn't happen. Um, and the reason I say the same pass mark for this year, well, 2020, is the fact that we've gone with the younger talent, so they're not going to be as potent as they will be in the next couple of years. So to win a final with that group uh, will be just even more exciting. And I think Port fans will get around that uh, when, it, when the time comes. Uh, a lot more will be like, oh, top four or bust. Um, but I think you've got to be realistic in that sense of, you know, we've got the young talent. You know, it's not an excuse. Obviously, the young crop players, young draftees, they're not going to be performing all the time. But at the same time, you've got blokes like Boat, Ebert, Wines, Jonas, Westhoff. These are all blokes that are surrounding the group. So, you know, you look at the Hawks in 2008. They were nowhere to be seen. The young group of players, Rioli um, and Franklin was still young and they went on to win a premiership. So anything can happen. I'd love it to happen in 150 years. But, yeah, it's, it's Port Adelaide, mate. I don't know. <laughs> well, um, on that note as well, um, I want to, on an honest answer to this, Anthony, what, what is the honest perception of Kane Corn from Port Adelaide fans? Do you like him? Do you hate him? Because I'm not going to lie, I can't stand the bloke, and I know a lot of people who feel the same way. <laughs> um, I personally love him because he follows me on Twitter. <laughs> oh, wow. That's all right. Um, I, I I love the fact that I don't hate him. Like, I think obviously he's going to piss people off with certain comments that he makes, but I think we need, we need someone in the media that isn't just going to write the happy-go-lucky stories or... Um, do stuff like that. And everyone's going to have a different opinion of different reporter. And, you know, they'll have different opinions about us, you know, watching our videos and watching this. Yeah. So um, at the end of the day, I think to have someone that calls out as it is, is refreshing. And obviously not everyone's going to love it, but I think that's what the modern world is, is the fact that not everyone loves what other people think. And also at the same time, the modern world's a little bit more softer than what it used to be. So um, I think, you know, I, I like him in general. Obviously, he's a Port Adelaide legend, so I love him for that. But in in the media aspect, I I, I don't mind him. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I yeah, I'm not at the can't stand him level yet. Yeah, fair enough. I agree with everything you said in principle. Like, uh, like we, it's good to have some characters in the media. Like the AFL media, especially the players, are so media trained. It is very vanilla. Um, that being said, I still find Kane Corn so annoying. Uh, but that, I have to admit, if uh, if he was an Eagles fan, I would probably love him. So um, yeah, no, that's it. I mean, he, he's a he's a poor man, so I've got to love him. Yeah, that's it. That's it. If cool he man. Gets me so, a job sometime, yeah, true. Well, if he follows you on Twitter, he's actually gone up in my books. That's pretty sweet. That's pretty cool. Nah, nah, I love him. <laughs> <laughs> cool man. So um, we'll just rifle through maybe a few more questions from the fans uh, before we wind up this podcast. So. Got, uh, we'll dive into I take W's question. A lot of these are team based, um, and he wants to know how do you think the Gold Coast Suns will go next year following their big intake of talent this year? Suns, um, I think they they won't finish bottom. I think they're actually going to surprise a few people. They have a season like they did a couple of years ago where they won like five or six games in a row, looking mm-hmm. likely to make finals. I think Gary Ablett was still there at that time. Um, yeah, they'll probably win four to six games and probably finish. They'll finish bottom four. Probably, I'll give it number 16. 16. Yeah, nice. Cool. cool. Um, so a good improvement for them. Yeah, that would be a very good season for them, uh, uh to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Nicholas R43 asks you, who will be the biggest improvers next year in the AFL? Biggest improvers. They had to um, nominate a team. Well, since Melbourne finished seventeenth, them. True. Yeah, actually, that's a good shout. I mean, that the, for that reason alone. But I think someone like a uh, Saint Kilda might surprise a few people. I reckon they've done well with their recruiting and stuff, so you might see them jump into the eight. I like it. I like it. Uh, Nicholas has followed up with the next question as well, and he says, what will happen to your friendship, meaning you and me, if there is an Eagles Port Adelaide grand final? Um, oh, I guess it's funny. I've got a few Eagles supporters that are actually friends over here in SA. And really? Yeah, they, they get around it. I mean, I haven't, been, I haven't stopped being reminded about 
the 2017 elimination oh, final. Yeah. Um, I'm not going into that. That is, <laughs> that is a tough pill to swallow still to this day. Yeah. Um, you kind of got your revenge this year, though. Uh, it's not revenge, mate. It's not a final. <laughs> yeah, true, true. Uh, we'll be friends, um, but I just won't watch your videos. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, the, especially the week after if we win. Yeah, yeah, I won't be watching them at all. We'll be unsubscribing and everything. <laughs> we can still chat, mate. Well, if we if they do play in a grand final, we'll have to do a special podcast for that. That would be uh, fiery, I'm sure. I think we'll be getting tickets and going, mate. That's what we'll True. Be Bloody oath. Yeah, we'll do one in Melbourne with the boys. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> grand final week. Yeah, sick. Um, Benny Boy on Fire is a Sydney fan, and he wants to know, when will Sydney next make finals? Ooh, I think um, probably 2022. I think, uh, they, they, I mean, they could do it next year. But Sydney is just that team that's just like, oh, we'll have an off year, and then we'll come back and play top two and probably play in the granny. Um, yeah. But I think I think with their young crop that have gotten, uh, they've gone a little bit heavier in the draft and the trade period wasn't, uh, if I remember right, they didn't go as heavy. Um, but I think uh, they'll develop and then they'll just, um, they won't finish, they won't bottom out, finish bottom four or anything like that. But they yeah. will come back in the next couple of years, I reckon. They'll play yeah. Fans. That's right. Yeah. In the, uh, in the trade period, they missed out on Danaher and they didn't, they didn't get rid of Papley either. So, yeah, not a lot of action from the Sydney Swans. But, yeah, like you say, I think a lot of it's going to come down to how much Buddy plays. Because yeah, he's, that's he's the difference between them, like, borderline finals and then, you know, finishing way lower, um, in my opinion. He only Benny Boy. 20 goals last year, didn't he? What's that, sorry? He only kicked 20 goals, I think. Yeah, I think he – did he only play, like, 10 games or something? Yeah, he kicked 20 goals. So, if you yeah. add 40 goals to that, there's a few wins in that. Exactly, yeah. That's very true. Um, Benny Boy on Fire follows up with the next question and he says, who are the most underrated players in the league in your opinion? And I'll allow you to say Port Adelaide players. That's fine. Um, ooh, that's a... Underrated. Well, one is Dan Houston from Port Adelaide. Yep. I think yeah, I agree with that very one. Very underrated. Um, there's a... Ooh, underrated. I think... Um, who's the tall forward... Uh, GWS that isn't Cameron who's the other one that Finn is? Lason yeah so I think he's very underrated as a tall forward yeah uh, I don't think he had a touch in the grand final so that's mm. something. <laughs> 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 I think in general he's very underrated and I think um, Dylan is it, no it's not Dylan um, Stephenson from Collingwood Jaden Stephenson gets, Jayden, that's the one Dylan I'm thinking of the one in the draft yeah um, Jaden is the one that I reckon he's one of the best small forwards in the game. I think he, the way he moves, the way he's got pace, and the way he just um, is able to sneak up and kick a goal is immense. And obviously he had his trouble this year, but I think he made the world of the difference when he came back to play for Collingwood in the final series. Yeah, nice. Good call. Yeah, he's a ridiculously good player for his age as well. He's like a, well, it was his second year this year as well. Yeah, so I, I have probably there's probably more underrated players out there that I can't think of off the top of my head, but um, it's a good video idea. Oh, uh. one moment, <laughs> I write that one down. <laughs> um, yeah, cool. Uh, so moving on, we have a double up question. Two people ask the same thing, so I'll give a shout out to Mills and Michael Stanton again. They both want to know. Um, how the Adelaide Crows are going to go next year, and that's a team I know you are very passionate about. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. well, family follows them. The majority of my friends are Crows supporters, so they'll be interested to see. Um, I would love them to finish in the bottom four. I, I think, realistically, they'll probably stick around the 12 mark. Uh, I think they will be actually underrated this year with young Crow talent they've got in. New coach is always going to be uh, a bit of motivation for the older players as well. No captain, super Tex Walker. Um, so he might have a year like Pope did and play an absolute blinder and uh, almost make all Australian. Um, but I think, yeah, around that 12 to 14 mark, they, they could make finals. Yeah. How long, if you had to put a guess on it, how long do you think until they're sort of back playing their best footy 
and in finals. I know it's not a very pleasant thought for you. You know, 2017, when I thought they were going to win the premiership, I probably um, would have never followed football again. But yeah, um, I think, yeah, 2022, 2023, they'll be back right in the mix again. I think the young crop of players they've got aren't as good as other teams. But I think with the that core of the 24 to 28 year olds they've got is actually a really good group, like the likes of Malira. Um, you know, the backman in, uh, is Kelly? Yes, yeah, Kelly. I think he's really good um, down there and, and the, all the other um, small forwards as well that they've got going around, uh, I think, will uh, work out. And obviously, um, the ruckman, Riley O'Brien, he's a mm. star. I reckon he, he could be Australian this year if the Crows um, do go well. Wow, someone's going to clip up all this talk about you talking about the Crows and praising them and they're just going to make a video out of it. Far out. I might have to do it. I might do it myself. No, no. Control, I'll delete, Jesse. Control, I'll delete. Cool, man. So we just have one more fan question uh, and then I've got a couple to finish off. But uh, this one's from Dominic, a Hawthorne fan, and he wants to know, uh, who do you think will be the best player to come back for their club from injury this year? Um, and I think two really obvious examples of Rance and Tom Mitchell. Um, uh, and I know I'm putting you on the spot with this one as well because it's really hard to think who's coming back from injury. Um, Jesse oh, I guess Hogan. Buddy Franklin. Oh yeah, Jesse nice. Hogan. I think he's got a lot. He's got a lot to prove with Fremantle, um, and they're probably going to be another one that will surprise a lot of teams this year. I know they fell away last year, uh, but they were actually playing some good footy and with. Players like Sonny Williams and uh, Will- Williams Winters. <laughs> I'm thinking about Port Adelaide draft picks. Now. Um, yes, uh, yeah, we, uh, Walters, Walters, the one I'm thinking of, um, and they're obviously Fife and uh, their core group of good players. I think, um, there. Yeah, I think Jesse Hogan, and then obviously you're going to say Buddy and Alex Rance will probably win third premiership. Uh, though Richmond will probably win a third premiership anyway with him coming back. So, um, I think yeah, the the game's missed Buddy. I'd love to see him come back and hit a thousand goals. That's what I'd love to see. In a season? No. Nah. <laughs> 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 Mate, if there's anyone that can do it, it's him. Yeah, no joke. <laughs> 25 games in a year, 100 goals a game, not bad. Yeah. <laughs> That's it, mate. No, those are good nominations. I, I, I hate to say it, but I think there's another guy from Frio that I would nominate. It's probably Alex Pierce as being someone who comes back into the side and has a real good impact for him. Yeah, a lot of people do because he's injured all the time, but he's a really, really good defender. I know how he feels as a fullback. He's yeah. He's tough. So I yeah. look forward to coming back and watching his craft. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Um, cool, man. So I'm going to finish off this potty with a couple of questions for you. Uh, or actually, we'll maybe, maybe make it three. Yeah. Um, do you have any advice out there for young creators or AFL young creators in particular? So guys who are... Um, a bit younger than us, maybe the teenage years. There's a lot of guys popping up, uh, young fellas now popping up with the YouTube channels and now trying to make it. Um, is there any advice you'd give to someone who's starting off doing the same thing? This might be a long answer, so bear with me. But I'm ready. One thing I'd say is definitely don't let anyone um, dis, not dis, unmotivate you, if that's the right word. Um, if it's something you want to do, just pull out the phone, talk in front of it, put it out. You know, it's what I did. I'm sure that's what you did. I'm sure that's what you know everyone's favourite Kane McDonald did. I'm sure that's what others have done around the world. Just pull a camera out, film something, they put it out, and they're like, "Oh, that was actually pretty good. That was actually pretty funny. That was entertaining." And for me, that's probably the biggest thing is the fact that don't let uh, don't be scared to do it. I think that's the biggest step you've got to take to being, being a YouTuber or being in the media or something to do with the camera. I think if you want to do it, well, just, yeah, roll a pair of balls and put it out there. That's, that's the biggest thing I think it was for me. And I think the best thing about it right now is we're creating um, a community that's actually really enjoyable to be a part of. And I know, you know, there's, as I said, there's Cad McDonald, Austin Cookson, there's yourself, me, there's Backyard Charizard, and there's Cardman, there's 
hundreds of others that I'm starting to notice. And a lot of people won't think, you know, we'll watch it, but we'll sit there and be like, oh, yeah, you got some skills, mate. You've got this. And it's actually fulfilling to know that other people are watching your stuff. So once you know, even 20 people view a video, you're like, oh, 20 people have watched that. And that's probably the best feeling is the fact that other people are enjoying what you're making. Um, and with a community like ours, it's actually rare to get into like the AFL YouTube community. There's not a lot of people. There's mm. an open market for it. Um, and, yeah, just get out there and do it. And I, I know I draw inspiration from the fact that I follow a lot of F1 racing um, YouTubers that make gaming content for that. Um, and that's, look at it now, that like there's eSports for that, for F1. Um, the people are thriving in it. There's YouTubers that have like a hundred subscribers that are winning races on F1, uh, the F1 YouTube channel. So, if we can create a community that's got more than just um, six or seven standouts uh, and become a full-on um, community, uh, you would have seen it. Uh, the charity match I'm going to do with YouTubers. Uh, someone came up with the idea to do it. Uh, that's <laughs> if that can happen. That's outstanding um, that's true and if you can get involved in that and i know we'll, we'll get there one day uh it's yeah it's, it's really fulfilling to know that people watch your stuff and enjoy your stuff so don't be afraid to get out there and uh, put your face out there because you know what you take a photo of yourself anyway with a selfie so you might as well watch it for 10 minutes yeah that's true no i love that answer that's great do you remember when you first started recording like yourself did you feel really awkward in front of a camera <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, I do. Trust me. Um, yeah. there was, there was, the first video I did uh, was the best 22 for Port Adelaide in 2017. It took me 20 minutes to try and record the intro because I was wow. standing up. I was there like, oh, my God, that's filth. What am I watching? <laughs> and then I was like, nah, mate, that's disgusting. And I had this unjointed uh, beard. It looked, I look weird, man. I just, yeah. it felt very <laughs> cringe. Yeah. And I stumble upon old videos every now and then while I'm um, editing and all that. I'm like, what the hell are you thinking? Why? And then now I watch it and I'm still like, what's wrong with you, mate? What are you talking about? But um, yeah, I, <laughs> it was funny at the beginning, but now it's like second nature. You, you get used to it after a while. Yeah, that's it, man. Like, it, funny enough, not even that long ago, I did my um, reacting to my AFL ladder predictions video where I'm like, obviously, I think you did one as well where you're sort of watching yourself in the video at the start of the year and then you're reacting to it. And I, I couldn't believe like how bad I was in front of the camera in that first video. I was like barely looking at the camera and not projecting my voice at all. And, and like, I didn't even think about working on it that much. It just happens over time. And even at work, I have to do... Um, like live streams. I work at Bunnings and we have to do like live streams for the store. It's, it's so lame. But um, I, I, I get into my YouTube mode and stuff and it just comes so naturally now. It's, um, it's funny how that's just happened. It's funny because um, I don't know if it's for you, but if you're home alone, you actually do a lot better. Well, I start oh, yeah. screaming at the camera. Like, <laughs> I don't know, like, it's second age to have family in the house and talk about what I learned stuff because they're used to it by now. But when you're home alone, it's just like, I can just scream at the camera and yeah. feel so confident, so alive. Um, and you, you're always going to be scared about what you're going to sound like. But yeah, it becomes second nature in the end. Doing live streams for Bunnings would probably help a lot more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, nobody else likes to do it, as you can imagine, because nobody, like, nobody's used to talking in front of a camera and have, like, it's only for our store, so there's only, like, 20 people watching. But, um, yeah, no, nah, it's good fun. 20 people more than Harris Scarf at good my work, <laughs> that's it um another really good segue question into this is part of the advice question but how do you deal with online negativity now i can't imagine why too many people would say anything bad about your stuff but at 2200 subscribers i'm guessing just over time you would have copped a few bad comments like i i certainly do um do you is it something you've gotten better at handling is there anything you do in particular or are you just sort of um is it sort of water off a duck's back um it's it's funny. I don't get a lot of like abusive negativity. You obviously get just some... me then. Yes, no, nah, it's definitely just <laughs> you, mate. And guess what? That's my account that I'm doing it on. But, <laughs> nah, uh, it's um, I've gotten a couple. Like at the beginning of the year, I got one that was very like wow. 
Wow. That's some um, top shelf hate that I got. And it was like stuff about Porter shit, you suck. I hope your mum died, you know, all that type really? of stuff. Yeah, it was I don't bad. know why I'm surprised, but it is pretty bad. It, it was bad. I was away too, and I just looked at it and think, oh, my God. Yeah. This kid's like 12 years old, and he's saying that. That's uh, it, man. Yeah, it, it was – And the fun, there was another one that I got a couple of years ago, like when I was on the – um like first starting. A little eight-year-old that I found out it was – um. He somehow ended up on Nuffy's AFL pages. <laughs> I yes. didn't even notice, and I had to <laughs> tell them, like, "Look, this is this is my start. This is my page." Like, <laughs> I was starting to get tagged, and I was like, "Mate, I don't want to see it. Just get it rid of it." <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I was ended up out there a bit, but yeah, I don't try and notice it too much. I'm not the type that like, if I get abused or I get rid- rid- um, ridiculed about something, I'm not going to be like, "Well." What are you going to do? Like that, they've already said it. You can't change it. So uh, I just try and move on, delete the comment, and um, yeah, if they don't agree with my opinion, that's you know, who cares, seven, right? Eight, that's, that's everyone has their different opinions about different things. But yeah, when it's when it's personal, then you got to be like, well, mm. just buzz off, get out of uh, get out of this room because you're not wanted. For sure, man. I think uh, over time, like. Uh, especially on predictions videos, as I'm sure you notice, you get way more hate on those because a they got more views, but b everyone just hates you if you don't put their team high. But um, but it's funny. Like I, I think sometimes my like even my girlfriend will see some comments and she'll be like, "Oh, what what's that? Like that's a bit weird." And I just I literally do not care. A lot of the time, like 99 percent of the time, like I literally just uh, often I find it funny. Like if it's a real nuffies post, and then occasionally someone will just like really critique like the podcast or something. And I'll be like, "Oh, that was brutal." <laughs> Yeah, when they start critiquing how you do things. Uh, and it's quite, like, intelligent as well. Like, sometimes the criticism is good, and I'm like, far out, that actually hurts. Um, <laughs> but that, that doesn't happen too much at the moment, which is good. <laughs> I, I don't get a lot of it. I get a lot of... Um, I love the comments of good video. That really just hits the nail home. Just the two words. The first yeah. time, good video. Yeah. Like, yeah or, uh, you, you watched it. I know that. Three you know what warms in. my heart? When people say first, I'm like, oh, that's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I got one of those comments for the first time, I was like, I've finally made it. I've got yeah. the first. Video. Yeah, with a total of four comments. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's good, uh, man. It's funny, man. Cool, man. So the last question I have for you on this podcast today um, is something I've stolen from my favorite podcaster. Uh, the True Geordie podcast, the inspiration for the True Footy podcast. He always asks the same thing to his guests, and it's how would you like to be remembered? Um, in a life aspect, I guess it would be probably. Um, I'm gonna remember. I know I'm gonna be remembered for it anyway. But the, the number one poor fan, but um, and that's not to say there's people out there that um, you know. Uh, the number one poor fan, you can never put a number on it, but yeah, I just want to be remembered as the uh, someone who always had a smile on their face and was able to live um, life to its fullest. And you know, being through Port Adelaide and stuff like that, you know, passionate, uh, you get it as well with the West Coast Eagles, just as a passionate person. Um, and to do that with Port, obviously, going to be showcasing that a little bit more, but yeah, just to be passionate and one of the good guys i, I love that man i think i think that's something you do pretty successfully already so uh good on you uh that comes to the end of this true footy podcast 44 or 45 whatever it is uh anthony you've you've absolutely smashed it mate thank you so much for coming on the show uh why don't uh why don't you just tell people where they can find you and your content and your social medias and stuff um so obviously the pair on the youtube it's the pair one word um you will be able to find that pretty easily. You'll be able to see, well, search up Port Adelaide. My mug's there, really. Um, content on Instagram as well, Port Pair, and then Twitter. Uh, just follow Anthony Alisiani. You'll be able to catch me talking about more Port Crap. Awesome, man. And that's good that I just heard you say your surname because I was like, how do you pronounce that? I'm just going to call him Anthony. <laughs> yeah, Alice, good. Uh, I, do you know what's funny? I, I, it was Alisiani. I always thought it was Alisiani. Then I got told, I was like, Alessiani. That's the way I read oh. it. Yeah, Alessiani. It, that's what it is. But 
I'm so used to saying Elisiani for so many years, it's come second nature. But Alessiani. My name's the same because I'm um, I'm McClure, so it's M C L U R E, and generally that's spelt with two C's, so it's McClure. But if you break it down, it's McLure. So well, I've been living a lie as well. <laughs> Lure. McLure, yeah. McLure cool. sounds like a fishing brand from McDonald's. I do get, yeah, exactly. Huh. Future business idea. Ah, <laughs> ah, there you go. We're going to make cool. money on here, I'll tell you what. Yeah. <laughs> cool, mate. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. And thank you to all the people out there on YouTube who tuned in or iTunes and Spotify. Uh, it's been the True Footy Podcast. And go subscribe to the pair. Cheers. Thanks, boys.